Well, hello everyone. Larry Bailey here, Awesome Technologies Inc. It's four o'clock on Tuesday, April 30th. What are you guys doing here? You're supposed to be out there closing loans. Like what the heck? Uh, Chris, um, you're are you sure you were first? Are we sure about that? Anyway, hey everybody, uh, thanks for coming today <laughs> to post. Oh, that's true. Chris was first to post. Will somebody beat him next time? Um, we meet on the community here every Tuesday, 4 p.m. Eastern. For those that are listening on replay, thank you very much. But get your butts over here to the live show. It's where you get to ask live questions and and um, find out exactly how hot it is in New Jersey. I got the air conditioner on. My other air conditioner that was in here last year, it done died. So I had to get this, this little portable dude, which is fine, which is fine. Um, today's all about Encompass Web Customizations. And I feel like I've been talking about Encompass Web for at least 12 months, probably 13 or 14 months. And I'm super stoked about it, truthfully. Um, I spent the last, I don't know, week at least, week and a half, um, really sharing uh, a lot of ideas and concepts of things that you can do on the web for your Encompass desktop today, right now. And most importantly, it's actually, a lot of this has come out uh, for me building lessons for the Mastering Encompass um, web Essentials course. For those that are on that, thank you very much. For others, it's 499 bucks, lifetime membership, all the updates, all the access, all the replays, all the lessons, um, worth well worth every penny. Um, because, and I'm gonna go through some of the stuff today with you and explain how this is, works. Um, if this is your first time here, uh, Amy said she's already learned a ton already. Um, and thank you for that, Amy. Um, the first time here, uh, use the chat feature. You don't need to come on stage. However, if you do want to share your screen or you do want to um, ask questions on audio or video, I can invite you up on stage. You can join. Um, that is a Hisense. I don't know if that's how you pronounce it, but it's a uh, it is a, an AC. It is a fan, and it is a dehumidifier. So, Candice, it's all three. It's a beautiful machine. And it's 10,000 BTU. I'm in an old house. It actually flipped the breaker last night. Because <laughs> I, I was on the wrong circuit in the house. And that sucker's pretty powerful. Um, and so is Encompass Web. So uh, who still thinks Encompass Web is different from Encompass Desktop uh, in your loan files? Hopefully the answer is none of you. Uh, so I do want to reiterate something that's really important. Is Encompass Web, Encompass Desktop, um, they're all, they're all the same thing. Yeah, Candice, I would tell you, um, a lot of these portables are combo, uh, AC and dehumidifier. And actually some of these are heat pumps too. So if you want a little heat pump, it'll reverse, go to heat pump mode. Um, and so you might not have gotten this email and I didn't post it because it's really partner based, but yesterday I sent out an email to all of the partners. Um, ICE is consolidating the, uh, the website that you hit for API interaction with version 24.2. I'm telling you right now, um, you got to get on to Encompass web settings and you've got to understand what you're able to do today. I'm going to go through a lot of the features that I think are important. Hopefully I can get your wheels turning um, for what you can do with Encompass web relevant for your Encompass desktop. Um, earlier in the year, I thought it was going to be all about uh, sales. I'm not wrong, but with the notifications uh, templates that are there and the um, the uh, scheduler templates that are there and some of the new actions that are available and the results that are available now in uh, workflow rules, super clean stuff. I'm going to share that on screen with you here. Before I do that, does anyone have any questions they want to go over? Has anyone tried and failed? Um, is everyone like too busy with other things to even give it a good look? Uh, those kinds of things. I'd love to hear from you. And again, for those that have joined late, feel free to ask any questions. I'm going to go ahead and share screen uh, over here. And uh, let's see, we've got a question. It tried and failed, tried again, had some success. Um, so Chris, I'd love to understand more about what you tried. Uh, I'm going to share some things that I think are, uh, oh, coding. Oh, this isn't even like coding stuff. Like I'm not even talking JavaScript. You're talking about JavaScript for like web pages and stuff. So of course, um, head over to encompass.ice.com. Have your ping ready. Uh, let's get out of that one. I don't like that one. BE11. 
I think it's this guy. Two, three, five, four, six. Do you think I'd have this already done? Actually, I'll just go into this one because I know I know this one works. I'm being lazy. Plus, I don't want to put you through the, the nonsense of watching me try to log into Encompass Web. Um, hey, listen, while I'm thinking about this, I am going to call out SSO. So for those that are not have not implemented SSO for your Encompass, um, you, you really should. And it's not hard. I actually posted in the community. If you search in the community, here, I'll just show you real quick. If you search in the community um, for SSO, which is actually what I had to do because I couldn't find it. If you go to if you go to feed, it's usually where I go because it searches across the whole community. Um, search for SSO across everything. Get out of here. Um, so setting up SSO Compass Guide, like boom, it's right there. Um, and so yeah, so there's some stuff in there. Uh, and so I bring this up because if you have SSO, you don't need ping. It just zaps you straight through it. Um, keep in mind, it's a little bit of a trick. If you're used to going in as admin, you might have to have two email addresses as far as on your computer, one going in as admin, one um, going in as yourself as a super, uh, which is always my recommendation. So check this out, uh, under workflow management. I wanna explain notification templates. This came out in 24.1 and I want you to think about, especially for those that are using um, Kenzie Mays, uh, advanced email utility or ATIs, loan notifier, or Ignites, whatever they call it, or I don't even know if Lender Toolkit has one, but Lender Toolkit's whatever they call it, to send out automated emails based upon actions, right? We, 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 we always live on email in our workflows, which is insane. But if I come in here and select, now currently, this is only set up for internal users, but I do want to call out that in the roles, there are TPOs down here. Now, I know Amy and I talked about this yeah, uh, this week or last week, I didn't even notice TPO was down there and she, it caught her eye because one of the things that you can do if you want to send this out to like a TPO test, and then you can also do like a CC or a BCC here, but you can build out this template. So I'll do a TPO test. I don't know if I already did this in here. I don't think I did. Um, and I can just do test in here and I can do test down here. And this is full HTML. Like if you want to code, Chris, code away. Otherwise, you can do um, all your standard fields, custom fields, and even virtual fields, even virtual fields, which is great if you want to send like a TPO an update or you want to send a borrower an update or loan officer an update, you can kind of fill it in here and build a template. And what's and what's um, really neat about this, I did do one. And what's really neat about this is the scheduler template. Now, this is the thing that for me was like a holy crap, this is awesome. So you can create anything you want based upon any kind of calendar that you have set up. So if you want to use the alarm, you know, I'm going to call it like an alarm clock. When the alarm clock goes off, something happens, right? We usually hit snooze. Um, but if you're, if you're good, you like jump out of bed or whatever you're doing or stop doing what you're doing or start doing what you're supposed to do. And that's what this does. So what you're saying is either company calendar, lock desk calendar, right? When did you ever get to that? Reg Z bat calendar or US postal calendar or none. I like the none. Um, Amy said she set one up five days before lock expiration, which is exactly the use case here. I want to copy it, yeah. So set up your time zone that you wanna run. Now, here's the thing. And what Amy did was she put five days in for the duration days before, and here she put the field. So if you want loan data, Guys, select anything you want. You know, if you want to use 763, estimated closing dates are like five days before closing. Did you send out the ICD? You know, or if you want to use, uh, help me out. What's it? Seven. What's the estimated closing date? Um, thank you. 762. The rate lock expires. I said estimated closing, but rate lock expires. Amy and I are like connected now in our brains. So every day at, at 600, 0600 a.m., um, and you set that up. So now what you're doing is you're saying, hey, listen, five days before the lock expires, I'm going to do something. So let's do five day, five day test, right? So now we have this scheduler set up. Here's the magic. Here's the magic. Come down to process automation, go to workflow rules. And now you get to come in 
And here, I'll, I'll do this one because it's already built. So what we said was we can pick um, our, our scheduler, right? So if we come in here, we, we do schedule completer. Three days before lock expiring is my scheduler. And my result is to send out a notification template. You know, you don't need third-party tech anymore. To send out date or condition-based emails lights out. So basically, if you've got anything happening, maybe a borrower completes an application online and, and it goes right into your Encompass. Maybe you've got some other robots doing something in your system or some other automation doing in your system and you want to send out some notifications. That's, that's one of the things that I wanted to really talk about in today for custom, things that you can customize. I want to talk about this part um, and then we're going to get into like down here, which is what Chris was talking about, like building web forms and things, because I have a whole nother conversation. So before I move on, though, um, obviously, you know, there's lots of conversations about tasks and that's that's cool. But to customize how you're sending out notifications is one of those things that hopefully is enlightening you. Hopefully it's giving you some ideas. I'd love to hear the feedback. And, um, you know, and when you come in here in these notification templates, unfortunately, you can't export. Um, you can duplicate within. You can't import either. Um, so if you come in, but you can do it with scheduler templates, which again, I mean, they're not, honestly, they're not like terribly crazy. Like, I don't know why you'd want to export that and import that unless they were like really weird kind of setup somehow. Um, in any event, that's uh, that's what I had for you on workflow management customizations um, that you can start using today in web settings to impact your your loan production today. Cool? Cool. All right. So everybody who's joined, we're talking about Encompass Web Customizations. And I'd love to hear what people are doing. I'd love to hear how you're doing it and uh, where you've succeeded or failed. Um, besides Amy, has anybody done this yet? Probably not, right? Because <laughs> Amy, Amy has no stops. He just goes. All right, so let's talk about customization down here. Um, quick show of hands in the chat. Is anybody actually using Encompass Web for anything? In other words, are you allowing your loan officers to check their pipeline on the road? Are you allowing them to price and lock for something or look up borrower information from the road? Um, those kinds of things. Uh, Chris is just exploring. I can tell you that uh, a year and a half ago, I used... At that time, it was really known as Elo Connect, but I used Encompass Web to check on my estimated closings for the month and which files were locked um, seven days before closing because I wanted to make sure they were locked and make sure the ICD went out. Um, I also was checking from the road. I was also checking um, um, my production for the week. In other words, how many disclosures for the week, that kind of a thing. So you might not think of that as customization, but remember when you are going into your pipeline, you're seeing your pipeline views from desktop, from your account. Remember, this is all one Encompass. It's not web desktop, it's just Encompass. <clears throat> so um, by saying that, one thing that is unique between Encompass web and Encompass desktop is the input form, right? And so, um, I'm gonna make sure, I'm gonna stop sharing. I'm gonna make, because I don't wanna make a mistake and put up a pipeline on a, which it would have done. So I didn't do it. So I'm gonna bring over a, a, a testing folder and I wanna share. All right, cool, now we're good. Uh, let's go ahead and share, entire screen again, cool. So we're all used to kind of our, our desktop input forms, right? And historically speaking, from a typical paradigm, it's I want to create more summary forms because I want to put more information as tightly as possible um, on a, in a custom input form that makes sense. So, you know, in this particular case, um, you know, this particular input form is not unique. Like this is not new. It's not novel. A lot of people have this kind of a thing and, and it scrolls and it scrolls and it scrolls and it scrolls, and I guarantee nobody ever comes down here. Okay, guarantee it. So when you're in um, when you're in Encompass Web, 
what if instead of doing the scroll, what if you were using cards? This is a card layout on input form. Now, one of the things that is important to understand is how does this work in real life? So when you're over in, I'm going to go into pipeline and bring it back over. So this is, this is Encompass Web Input Form Builder. And what's really nice is it doesn't require code. You can just come in here and you can decide that you want to just drag and drop. And, and when you go through, if you wanted to adjust this, it's literally just drag and drop. Some of the things that you have to become aware of are the layouts. So in other words, if I come over here and I wanted to drag in another card, you'll notice I just can't drop and then resize it. It's pre-built. And the reason why is because Encompass Web has to be responsive. It's got to go in and it's got to go into the right spot in the frame because as the screen shrinks, right, it's got to be able to move. Now you won't see it on here because this is the builder. But let me go ahead and bring it over an actual loan file. So if we go over into this file, you can define um, where you land, first of all. You can define what you're allowed to see. But this application view is just what I showed you a moment ago. And what's important to understand is right there is called responsive. And that's a big deal for Encompass users because what this means is I can come in here on any size screen and I can go into one place. And then while I'm in that place doing my thing, I can come down here and I can go to the next place. And while I'm in there doing my thing, I can go down to this next place. So those that are near a keyboard, type in who has a custom summary form for your team, closers, salespeople, processors, underwriting, closing, whatever, right? Everybody, everybody. Imagine that you looked at this perspective and this is your department and these cards all represent the forms that you want them to see. You no longer have to worry about this nonsense over here. That's money. That's a thousand percent money because everybody that I know of would love to go in here and they can go into the first thing. And then when they need to hop around, they can go into the next thing and they don't have to go back and forth. It's simply just a drag. And if you like pictures, these images that are in builder, you can, you can, you know, change what's on there. So if I change this and I want it to be a toolbox, I change it to a toolbox. <laughs> There's like money. Um, yeah. So should we have more card images? Yeah. Uh, we'll see where that goes. Um, but you also don't need to do a card image, right? If you don't want to. Um, yeah, I think Maggie, I think, I think you definitely an encompass geek if you think this is fun, but I also think it's fun. So, which is why I'm excited about it. Um, this is this is where I see customizations come into play. And as much as I said, it's probably just for sales. I don't know how I'm feeling about that anymore, because if I come into here, I can create um, any one of these forms. So let's go back to Builder for a second. And let's go over to a new form and let's go over into a form layout. And so you, in Input Form Builder on desktop, you have to figure out panels category boxes, group boxes. You have to figure out your pixel spacing, all that stuff. In here, it's just drag and drop. So if I wanted to do a, a category box, that's what this thing is. If I want to do a group box in there, I can. If I want to drop a, a text box in there, or I want to add a drop down in there, or if I want to do another, if I want to do a collection box over here, like these all mean something. I'm not going to spend this time teaching this to you. It's what I do in, in the uh, Mastery Encompass um, as an admin course. But the idea is you can do all these things. And what's nice is you don't have to worry about lining things up. It does it for you. Now, let's say you wanted to take this group box right here and you wanted to make that the entire width of the category box. Or you wanted to take this and you wanted to put it in the center. All you're doing is using layout sections because it's all responsive. It's relative to the screen it's on. Kim, you lie if you say you like lining them up. You're a liar. <laughs> Nobody likes that. No, Chris, this is this, that's called hazing. 
that's input form builder hazing. Um, yeah, it doesn't that's not that's not a thing here. Uh, and then you get to go through and and part of um, part of again part of me the magic I want to share with you today is you can you can look at your grids here and you can customize this. All of this stuff feeds into this. This is a form. So rather than have to build all these super complex, all that nonsense, you can just come in here and, and this is effectively a loan information widget. I'm going to use that term. I don't know if that's the correct term, but that's what I call it. Because if I wanted to go build other uh, views for other teams, I don't have to rebuild that entire widget. I can just drag it over into that into that card view. Right. So if I come back over again, if I come back over a new form, um, I don't want to save this thing. I can just do a new card layout, call this processing. And now I can drag over a card and I can select the card value from the link over here. These are all the links, guys. All your state specific forms look familiar. Hopefully it does. These are all your your native standard input forms. ICE has built it for you. All you have to do is make it pretty. Customize it. Make it yours. <clears throat> um, yeah, Candace. So Candace says she likes uh, the input form design. It gives creative. Hey, I, I'm with you. I, it's actually one of the things I, I thoroughly, I actually do enjoy because I feel like I can express what somebody should do and I can control the layout. Totally with you. This is going to make you go faster, more consistency in that, and I think it's going to give you a, a better outcome for your teams because i can train this a hell of a lot better than i can train that big old custom print form libby says can you create different application views for different personas so you wouldn't think about it that way Luba. you would think about different input forms and then you would if you want this to say application view for sales only give this to your sales persona application view for processing give that all your processing persona make sense so, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So let it sink in, right? Um, let it sink in, and and go from there. I think, again, I would, I would. Uh, what I've always suggested, really, since last year, is an Encompass Web really focus in on you know task management. So, um, because that's easy, that gets back into, again, the idea of how you can through your your uh, settings how you can make sure that tasks are being used and i thought there was a lot of value there but the more i go through um the by the way i don't know if you guys just i just did that naturally but you can use your browser button to go back and forth between loan files um you know so again just saying what you can't do um though is you can't like right mouse click open a new tab um, but you can have multiple encompass logins on different tabs so if you want to work on more than one file at once on each monitors theoretically you could um, in any event going back to what i was talking about when you go through when i go through this i started looking at this going it's not just tasks anymore for me with with this concept it's who else can i put on web that doesn't need all the stuff that's not there yet we know web is quicker than desktop. Now, if you're relying upon desktop because of all your third-party plugins, it's time to reevaluate why you have those plugins. I've been saying this for a while. I'm gonna, you're gonna hear me say it for a long time. And I have a vested interest in a company that builds plugins. But I'm telling you right now, ICE is gonna continue to develop things that are going to not let you depend on third-party plugins. Initial disclosure automation in desktop alive right now you can do it right now um you can do uh, you know your your you know notify me is what they call if somebody's in the loan file you don't need doorbell or knock knock or any of the other things um anymore on the web <clears throat> and if you do want to develop by the way if you do want to develop a custom tool um that lets you go through that's not it oh please where'd it go mm -mm -mm -mm. oh i'm being stupid Go back to admin. Um, if you do want to develop any custom tools, uh, you can. You know, you could never do this in Encompass Desktop. 
You just can't. You can build plugins. But now when you have custom tools, they'll actually show up in your toolbar in your loan file. And then lastly, if you, um, I don't know, Luba. It's a good question. Luba asks, what would a custom tool be? Um, configuring these enables your users to access these custom web applications. I'm imagining it's something to do with connecting to something that's web-based. I'm not a web developer. I don't know if anybody's a web developer on the call today or if you're listening to this on replay. Please answer Luba's question in the in the re replay thread. I don't know. Um, the good news is I've uh, ICE is you know ICE and ICE and I have have, have come a, a long way and they they really do appreciate as a company how much effort we're putting in together as a community to understand Encompass better. And so I'm actually meeting with some senior folks at secondary conference uh, next month. Um, and we're going to be talking about getting more information like what is a custom tool? What's a use case? What should we plan for? Why should we use it? Um, we've got we've had the roadmap, you know, for a while now, but we want to get better information back to the community so you guys can get better value out of these meetings and know what to plan. Um, and the last, you know, customization, of course, is a plugin. You can build a plugin that's going to go into your Encompass through Encompass uh, Web, you can upload it um, and, and let it do its thing. Can you pull a desktop plugin and put it into web? No, no, you can't. So, um, you know, what kind of plugin do you need? What's a good example of a plugin on the web? I don't know. It's another great question. It's the same question as what's a custom tool? I have no idea, um, but I'm gonna find out and I'll share it with you as soon as I do, if that's a good deal. Anybody have any questions, thoughts about, again, going through and looking at workflow management? There's so much, by the way, I didn't go into workflow rules because there's just not enough time, but please explore um, all of these. If you go in here and you click the little dude here and then the Encompass help, there's there's a whole bunch of material here you can read, it, it's good. It's not thoroughly complete, um, meaning it doesn't explain things in context a lot of times, but it, it does give a lot of information. I think it's I think it's really solid, right? I mean, this is look at this. It's pretty big. If that didn't make you dizzy, I can do it again for you. So there's a lot of information here that you can access. Um, and if you ever feel like you're just overwhelmed or you don't know what to do, um, I will say. You know, I will shamelessly promote um, this Encompass Web because I do think it's a big deal. Um, so this is this course here, this Web Essentials. And I go through all these settings um, and everything in detail. That's good. What's what's really important is we meet um, every Wednesday at one o'clock as a, you know, as a, as a private community. And we go over a lot of this information and share it. And that's that's why Amy is now using the five day notifications for and you use that for your TPO clients, right? You're sending out to your correspondence. So all of a sudden now, Amy didn't have to spend a dollar. Oh, end of the eighties didn't have to spend a dollar on third-party tech to do a five day before um, lock expiring. It's phenomenal. It's great stuff. So hopefully that's been helpful for everybody. I'm ending a couple minutes early. Sorry, but you guys are so quiet. Nobody has any questions. I thought this was pretty cool. Maybe you're just absorbing it. Maybe you're just thinking about what you can do. But um, yeah, I'm just, you know, I, I looked at the card thing and I'm just like, dude, that's awesome. In that context. And I've seen it. It's not like the first time I've seen it. But it finally sank in. I'm like, oh, I could make summary forms for all my teams. And, and what got it for me was looking at like the ATRQM. If you go to the ATRQM input form, it's actually two cards. And I'm like, Oh, now I get it. So hopefully I help you get it too. So Jeremy's typing a question and we'll see what Jeremy's question is. Oh, Jeremy's just said, thank you. Oh, you're welcome, Jeremy. Glad to come. Stop sharing over here. If nothing else, gang, thank you as always for coming to these meetings. And as always, I'm telling you, get back to work. See you, everybody. Have a great day. And somebody beat Chris next time on the first chat, please. Put him in his place, would you please? Thanks. <laughs> See you guys. Bye-bye.